in this particular video we're being asked to solve this particular equation, in other words find the value of x. This is probably going to come towards the end of an exam paper and is a little bit complex to kind of work through, mainly because the numbers are a little bit uh, tricky, you've got minus 10 here and x plus 7, all sorts of things going on with it, but nevertheless what I'm going to do is apply exactly the same rules that I always do when I'm dealing with fractions, but this time um, I need to make sure that the denominators are the same for both of the fractions and it's going to take me a little bit of time to write them out but um, as with adding or taking away any fraction you need to make sure the denominators are the same so I'm going to apply exactly the same rules as I would always apply to dealing with fractions so the first thing is is when I make these denominators the same I look at this x plus 3 and say well actually I need to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2 so the top here is going to become 3 times x minus 2 and then on the second fraction I need to multiply it by x plus 3. Okay, and then I'm going to combine these two together. If you're not sure about what I'm doing here, please do have a look at some of the other videos because um, this is quite a high level, so it will take a little bit of time to absorb. And if you're not sure, um, you're probably better just to go back and have a look at um, some of the other stuff just to really make sure that you've got the general principles in place. Now what I've done here is I've just worked out this expansion um, and then I'm going to simplify and gather up the like terms of this numerator at the top here. And what I find is I've got 3x plus 2x, well that's going to be 5x, and then I've got minus 6 plus 6, well that's going to disappear. So actually after all of this work what I end up with is 5x over x plus 3 times x minus 2 and that's equal to minus 10 over x plus 7. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just work um, around that a little bit to see if I can then find the value of x. And what I suspect is going to, I'm going to end up with some sort of quadratic equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply and that will give me what looks like something which is a little bit scary. I've just sort of multiplied across like that and multiplied across like that but I figure it's going to kind of work out for me. So on this side I'm going to get 5x squared plus 35x and on this side I'm going to leave that minus 10 but I'm going to multiply those two brackets out and I'm going to end up with x squared minus 2x plus 3x is going to be plus x minus 6. Okay so we're kind of getting there and it's looking a little bit more comfortable so I'm going to have to uh, just now start to fill in a little bit of space on this video so I'm going to multiply this out and then I'm going to move the working up to this side of the paper and I hope that's okay for you and you'll be able to see that. So this I'm going to get 5x squared plus 35x and this I'm going to get minus 10x squared minus 10x and remember now minus 10 times minus 6 is going to be giving me plus 60. Now in order to factorize what I need to make do uh, make sure is that um, everything equals zero. So if I now move all of these terms over to the other side what I end up with is taking this minus 10x and bring it over here and I'm going to get 15x squared. Then I've got minus uh, sorry minus 10x squared over here gives me 15x squared, minus 10x here, bring it over, that's going to give me plus 45x, and then I've got plus 60, going to bring it over here, that's going to give me minus 60, and that equals zero. Now, I feel quite confident at this point, because everything is divisible through by 15, and I think with these sorts of questions, it's, it's almost... Uh, fairly straightforward to the end, uh, towards the end, and what you'll find is, is you'll get, you'll start to get hopefully a fairly good feeling that actually 
when you're at this point, if you look at that, it's going to fairly easily give me that, which I know I can factorise into two bracketed terms. And that's going to give me minus one and plus four. Now, again, if you're not sure about how I've done that, please do have a look at some of the earlier videos on this. Um, and this point here, I think, is the point where it does give you that little bit of confidence to know that actually, once you get to there, you're on the home straight and you can then write that x equals positive one and x equals minus four. And actually, that's the answer to this particular question. So we started off with something that was quite complex. It got even more complex as we were kind of looking through things there. But then after a while, it almost like magic starts to come together and you end up with something that's a fairly straightforward solution. OK, uh, I know it's been a long video. I know there's been a lot going on in that. But if you do get the opportunity to have a look at some of the other videos, they may help uh, within the play playlist. Please do add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Subscribe subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.